that's my job. To establish a headquarters for international espionage and underground fighters in New York City. Enigma cipher machine. Now let's see if I know how to set this thing. I'll tap out a message on these keys. You write down what comes up on this panel here. There's a Canadian gentleman by the name of William Stevenson. That Stevenson might be using his personal wealth in a manner that could jeopardize this country's neutrality. I'd still like to meet uh, some of your people. You don't mean actors, I hope. No, I mean the ones who make cardboard look like stone and canvas look like sky. Ones with um, initiative. Oh, uh, gentlemen, I'm, I'm afraid you're in the shot. The dark girl in the middle facing this way, who's she? Her name's Noah Inyat Khan. Speaks seven languages perfectly. Save yourself in trouble. Get rid of her. Why? She's one of the best we've found so far. Because she's too attractive, that's why. Once seen, she won't be forgotten. It's not the best qualification for a spy. You're going away, and I'm staying behind, playing make-believe games. There's another difference. We're not lovers. Not yet. Not yet. help you. I'm with the English and I've been unable to make contact with the people who were to meet me. I need sanctuary, Sister Luke. She's not there, Evan. She's just not there. We've just received word, sir, that Hitler has given orders to the Luftwaffe to bomb Coventry. Could we stop an all-out effort, do you think? Possibly. number passing over location. Get 10 Downing Street on the scrambler and tell them exactly what you told me. Thank you. It's tonight. happened here will never be forgotten. We managed to recover your cipher book from the farmhouse. Without you on the key, I think we can deceive them. With you on the key, I know we can. I prefer knowing. Quite determined, isn't he? <laughs> when wasn't he about everything? You know, there's something going on in Stockholm that he might be considered. What are you talking about? Do you remember that Niels chap you were so concerned about, Niels Bohr? Niels Bohr? Yes, what about him? Well, to all intents and purposes, he's disappeared. Uh, but we've had some communiques about heavy machinery being shipped from France over to Scandinavia. Now, it's just the sort of machinery that he needs for this uh, nuclear research business. Who dances about the fire? Is that it? Yes. They want to ask us a question. You can live to be 90. For your present age, plus 30 seconds. Your choice.
They want to know who dances about the fire. Transmission reads, an Arabian princess dances about the fire. You said gypsy princess. One word difference. You're certain the word was gypsy? Absolutely certain. They say, welcome home, Madeline. Slept here all night. There's tea and whatnot for us both. Look, you could have woken me, you know. I don't know how I was sitting in that chair all night snoring my sinuses off. How do you feel? Hmm? Oh. I'll live. Thank you. Oh, I must run. Got a pack. I have a plane to catch at 11.30. Oh, don't worry about that. I'll send Miller down to your hotel. He can pack your stuff up and then... Drive you on down to the airport. You know, we spent so long last night talking about the war years, I don't know what you're doing anymore. I don't know where you live. Well, I'm still in movies. Home is Los Angeles, California. You married? Divorced. Two kids. They live with their mother in Santa Barbara. Does... Does it ever bother you, the strangeness of it all? How, how far we seem to come away from ourselves? I'm not sure I follow you. Well, there are times when I'll be driving along in Los Angeles and the sun is as, as hot as fire coming off the pavement and the car is air-conditioned. It's all very protected and suddenly, for no reason at all, I'll think about the war of Madeline, of, of going to Stockholm, of the times we had and the things we did. Hello! The Stevenson, S.T. Hello! You have to speak up! What? Hold up your hat. It's McKellian, the ass. He must know the lines are tapped. He must. Sounds drunk if you ask me. Hello? Mr. Stevenson? Mr. William Stevenson? Yes? I am talking to you from Stockholm, sweet. And, uh, what, what I want to say is that I hear that she has sent me here to scout the locations for one of their films. about the length of time his contact's taken to get to him. I really do want to get on with the job, Mr. Stevenson. If you, uh, if you, if you understand my meaning. I'm afraid that I'm not kept abreast of the day-to-day -day workings of the studio. Where do you think you bloody want to be? I'm sure that if your employers think that you're wasting your time where you are, they'll bring you home. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if this phone call didn't hasten their decision. My advice to you is to do exactly what your employers have told you to do. 
I'm sure your man will show up, but it is New Year's Eve, as you seem to have discovered. Good night. time with us. Well, you seem to be doing all right on your own. Oh. Well, uh, that may be true, but uh, it's always more fun when there are two of us. <laughs> come on, come and sing with us. I'm, I'm afraid I can't hear your song. You can't hear it? No. There are too many marching feet, too many people crying out for help. Oh, come on. The drowned. Oh. <laughs> no, but madam, don't don't let that stop you. Encore. Yeah, encore. Encore. Happy New Year, Mister. Somewhere, someday. Well, you couldn't have done a much better job of announcing you're here on behalf of Intrepid. Who are you? My name's Cynthia. I'm here to put you in touch with the princes, the Norwegian underground. Well, where on earth have you been? I've been stuck here for days waiting for someone to contact me. Happy New Year. Would you like to sleep with me? Look, uh, we've met. You're, you're free to leave at any time now. No. No, I'm not. I have to stay at least an hour. I'm sorry, I don't... I don't quite... It's almost certain that you're under constant surveillance. Now, if I come to your room and leave after five minutes, the only kind of exchange that could have happened between us is an exchange of information. If, on the other hand, I leave after an hour with my makeup smudged and my hair messed up, clearly another kind of exchange has taken place. That leaves the two of us free to move about the city and to accomplish what we need to accomplish. Brandy needs oak to age properly. What? Brandy needs oak to age properly. Well, so what? Isn't that right? The sign, the countersign? Well, no, no, it's not. Not for me. Oh, I'm 
sorry. I must have been confusing you with somebody else. Ah. Uh, the water's too cold for halibut. But there's a plentiful supply of cod. Right. Now, you know I'm bona fide, and you know why I have to stay for an hour. So we come back to my original question. Well, I'm uh, not sure what the regulations have to say about that. But, uh, I still have to stay another hour. <laughs> Do you, uh, have anything to read? Oh, well, there's a hotel Bible. And, uh, some newspapers over there. Thank you. You're Madeline. They told me about you. My name's Anna. They moved me here from Lyon. There were too many bombing raids. I think they'll probably move all of us further into the countryside before long. Look, I understand you don't trust me. You don't know who I am and whether or not I might be a double agent. But I'm not. I swear I'm not. Ask me something, anything. Ask me about Intrepid. Or Gubbins. Or old Mrs. Donner in the fire room. Ask me about Michaelian. Or Broadhurst, or... Tell me about Evan. Well, I don't know him personally, of course. When did you last see him? About two weeks ago. The day I was parachuted in. I was only here four days before they captured me. Heaven? I was in England. Two weeks ago. Do as well. Yes. On both counts. I'm sorry you're here. But I'm glad I'm not alone anymore. No. You're not alone anymore. Sweden may be neutral, but that doesn't mean she's not part of the war. What most people don't realize is that Sweden's neutrality benefits both sides. How do you mean? Both sides need a listening post. Sweden's one, Portugal's another. There's nothing to be gained by conquering Sweden, even if they could do it. You don't think Germany could conquer Sweden? Swedes are very stubborn. Like you. Well, I must confess, I'm not here because of an overwhelming interest in Sweden. Stubborn or otherwise. And what does interest you? Or interest in Trepid, which is what it really comes down to. A man by the name of Niels Bohr. He's a Danish scientist and... Germans have him. Yes. Now we need to know. I wasn't able to tell. We need to know what they've got him doing and where. 
Herman Goring's birthday. Thank you, buddy. Next Friday is Herman Goring's birthday. There'll be a party at the German embassy. <laughs> Well, the surroundings aren't exactly conducive to great joy. It's, it's very hard to be in a party mood. I know. Oh, You're evening. not safe here than you would be in England. Now, you know that's absolute nonsense. It's true. All the people in this room from neutral countries think you're in tight with the Germans. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Now, the Germans know that isn't true. Therefore, they think you're an English spy. Or my new lover. Why can't I be both? Mm. I'm far too frivolous for any spy to take up with. I'm only interested in one thing, and everyone in this room knows it. told you you have a wonderful behind. Do you mind? There are people listening here. I know. I'm going to circulate. I suggest you do the same. Good evening. All right. Mr. Michaelian. Yes. My name is Acker, sir. I am the cultural attaché for this embassy. How do you do, Mr. Herr Acker? Herr Acker. I was told you are a film artist. Well, I, I work for a film studio. <laughs> I'm not so sure about the artist part. And what precisely is your function, sir? If you don't mind my asking. Oh, no, not at all. I'm a, I'm a set designer. And what brings you to Stockholm? I'm here to scout locations for a forthcoming film. Then why is not a young person like yourself in uniform, Mr. Michaelian? I'm unqualified for military service, according to the army doctors. But you certainly appear quite robust. Oh, indeed I am. I'm also a homosexual. I didn't quite understand. I'm a homosexual. But uh, possibly you sense that. Possibly that's the reason why you why you came over to talk to me. That's not the reason at all. I have no sense of anything like that. I'm very poor at sensing anything like that. Well, I have other guests to meet. I'm sure that you understand. Well, maybe we could meet uh, later on. Well, that's very hard to say. I'm very busy. That woman by the fireplace, did you not come in with her? <laughs> well, um... There is a war on, you know. Did you learn anything? A German schnapps and a French champagne don't mix. <laughs> Are you just figuring that out? <laughs> How about you? Mm, not much. So, we're back where we started. No, not quite. I met a clerk from the Danish embassy. He's uh, going to let us into their file room. Well, how'd you get him to agree to that? I didn't. But uh, he will. <laughs> <laughs> We should abandon this. She should be executed. 
I don't agree. I wasn't asking for your approval. I was telling you what we're going to do. We're giving up too easily. I've been dealing with this woman for some months now. I can assure you we are not giving up too easily. She trusts me. We could make use of that. She trusts you, that's what you believe. But she's told you nothing of any importance. Therefore, she apparently knows nothing of any value. Therefore, she is of no value to us. Suppose you let both of us escape. She might lead us to other agents in the area. We let her escape once. She'd never be fooled a second time. We could try. If it doesn't work, you could execute her then. You're very determined. I don't like to abandon projects before they're completed. Is that all she means to you? The project? Yes. What is she to you? A person. Of the most incredible strength. She stopped being a person when she was captured. Sound like I used to. Thank you. What's meant as a compliment? Well. We'll try it your way. There may be some merit to your thought. That's just so that she'll believe you when you tell her that you've been interrogated. Thank you. My pleasure. his keys. I'm fine. I heard two of the guards talking. I think they're going to transfer us to Lyon. It'll be no different there. We can always hope. Don't worry. He's just left something in his office that we might need to make our evening more, uh, complete. We won't be long.
go. Shh. It's all right. We're supposed to be here, remember? Hold this under the light and keep it steady. All right? All right, next. Stop that now. He's gone back. If I stop after 30 seconds, I won't be doing much for your reputation. You'll be doing a lot of good for my blood pressure. Why can't we use the time? More logically. Because you... You are fighting a memory. scientist of his reputation half with. What else can you call a pacifist whose every move is making it easier for the Germans to construct an atomic bomb? Well, obviously he doesn't think so. And it's obviously they do. Well, they never let him finish his experiments. If they didn't think he was helping their war effort, they'd never be so lenient. What do you suggest? Assassination? If necessary, yes. But first I'd like to try to get him to defect before we do decide to kill him. Good Lord, listen to us.
Madeline, come on. Madeline? We might be able to get to the coast. Well, what are you waiting for? I'm not sure. But whatever it is, I think I'll wait for it here. I'm certain it'll arrive before too long. If we stay here, they'll find us and take us to the other camp. And they'll probably execute us there. They might execute me, Anna. But I somehow doubt that you're in danger. Don't you? Not heard a thing about her whereabouts, Mr. McCallion. Nothing but rumours and harmful speculations. What kind of speculations? I don't think I ought to pass them on. Can't see any good to come of it. I'd be grateful if you'd let me be the judge of that. Very well, then. I've heard some of the senior agents offer the theory that Madeline was sent over as what they term a false cipher. Well, I... I don't understand that term. It's a, an agent that's sent into enemy territory in order to be caught. In order to be caught? As a means of transmitting false information to the Germans. So you're saying that... Uh, Madeline was sent into France in order to be caught and... Uh, Orchard. No. What I'm saying is, some people believe that to be the case. I told you no good had come of this conversation. Well, if what you've just told me is true. Mr. McCallion, Mr. Stevenson would like to see you as soon as possible, sir. How very convenient. Come in. Oh, Evan, I'm going over to see Einstein to try and enlist his help in dealing with Neil's ball. I'd like you to come with me. Why? Well, because you got the files, and in case there's any problem about their authenticity. Very well. What's the matter with you? Got something on your mind? People, people here are saying that sometimes we send agents into enemy territory, expecting them to be caught, that they've been primed with false knowledge that we hope they will reveal to the Nazis. There can be no possible answer to that question, because since you ask it, you obviously think that I'm capable of doing such a thing. I'm not sure what to believe anymore. Of anybody. Well, maybe that's what makes you such an effective instrument in this organization. Instrument? What about person? I used to be a person. Madeline used to be a person. So did I. So did we all. It's not that we believe that Professor Bohr has been consciously helping the enemy. It's just that he doesn't seem to understand to what uses the results of his experiments could be put. And even more to the point, he doesn't believe that the people he's now working for are literally bent on world domination. And they'll do anything they have to do to achieve just that. You know where he is? He's in Norway. They built a plant for him to make heavy water. And if you found a way to convince him his research was harmful, 
We tried to get him out of the country. But he did then work for you. Yes, sir, that's true. A weapon of this nature is a horrible, loathsome creation. It would be best if no one had such a thing. Yes, of course, that would be best, sir, but unfortunately it looks very much as though someone very soon will have that loathsome creation, and that someone will be Adolf Hitler. What about you? Sir, sir. I'm not sure that I understand the question. Do you agree with Mr. Stephenson on his estimate of the situation? I don't know if he's right, but I'm not willing to take the chance that he's wrong. There you have it. Take that and give it to Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr will understand the significance of what is on that paper. And it will change his mind. And then? Then he will agree to work with you and not for the Nazis. There. I, if you don't mind, I... Have a meeting. It was nice to have met you both. I wish you well. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, goodbye. It's going to be a beautiful day. The first one of these I was at was also a beautiful day, and I remember. How surprised I was. I believe I expected the sky to be dark or it to be raining or cold, but it wasn't. It was beautiful, shining and glorious. When it was all over, a friend and I went up into the mountains for lunch at a small inn. I remember I had a glass of wine with a meal, a good Moselle. Cool, brisk, elegant. I learned something that day. The next few minutes will be unpleasant. But a man with discipline can still savor his lunch. Thank <laughs> you. 
No mistake. None. Oh well. Just one life. Not much in the scheme of things, as wars go. One is about the only number we can comprehend in wartime. A short while ago. I approved the assassination of Reinhard Heydrich, Hitler's overlord in Czechoslovakia, a murderous, sadistic butcher. One of the things I had to consider was what sort of reprisals Hitler might take, because Heydrich was one of his favorites. Well, we talked about it, we debated it, and finally we decided to go ahead. Yesterday, we learned the full extent of those reprisals. In Czechoslovakia, there's a quiet farming village called Lidici. There was a quiet farming village called Lidici. The Nazis took all the men from the village into a field and machine gunned them. And then they bulldozed the bodies into an open grave. Next, they took all the women and all the children. Down to the railway. <clears throat> and they put them on trains for the extermination camps. And lastly, they set fire to every single building in that village and they bulldozed the whole thing absolutely flat. 1,100 people lived in Medici. Eleven hundred. It's pretty hard to conceive. One thousand plus one hundred. But eleven hundred ones, Evan, that, that really brings it home. Oh, war is an insane activity that results in maimed ones, wounded ones, and dead ones. But none of them is small in the scheme of things, Evan. None of them is small. Not on our side or theirs, in this war or any other. None of them is small. Come in. From the lab, sir. They said you wanted to see it. Yes, I'm sure I did. Tell me what I'm looking at. It's, it's the Einstein memo, sir. Hidden in a tube of toothpaste. Thank you. Are you packed? Can be at any moment. Stockholm.
Good evening. <laughs> May I come in? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Thank you. Why so dark? Well, there are blackout regulations here, too, you know. Well, you... You could have closed the curtains. <laughs> yes, I'll get the uh, package for you. I'm sorry about Madeleine. They told me when they gave me this assignment. Why would they do that? To make certain it wasn't affecting your efficiency, your judgment. I'm not the only one who's lost someone in this bloody war. Be that as it may. There it is. Now, how soon do you think you can deliver this to Niels Boer? I don't know. But they won't wait. It won't be long. Well, the sooner the better. People aren't lost, Evan. They die. And those of us that are left go on. Do you know what I think? I think you're a whore. Who couldn't give a damn about what's going on in this world. You may be right. I think you're wrong, obviously. Because I haven't earned that from you in anything I've said or done, in anything that's gone on between us. Wait, wait, please. You're right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. She must have been very fine, Evan. Like to, uh, Thank you. Uh, Do you know how long it will be? I leave tonight. I should be there by Thursday. Will Bohr have it on Thursday? I can't be sure. They're bringing in a new head of security. I'll have to see the freedom he allows the professor. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Heisenberg? Yes. I'm Colonel Jürgen. You and I have a shared destination, according to the passenger agent. Well, you are also traveling to Rukan, hmm? <laughs> Oh, yes. It is what I believe the English call being sent to Coventry. My impression is that the facility is an important one. Surely any assignment there is also considered an important one, not a punishment. Facility can be considered important in many ways. Being head of security of a facility that could not possibly be more secure is hardly a promotion. What do you do at Rukan, Doctor? 
I serve as a consultant to one of the uh, researchers, Professor Niels Bohr. One of the researchers? Hmm. I received the distinct impression that he was the researcher. There are those that would share that definition. Care to join me, Doctor? It, it keeps me awake. It has precisely the opposite effect on me. That may be due to increased dosage. <laughs>